December 2nd, 2017. This says, is a New World Order a theory? Ask these guys. Well, I have a better question. Is the New World Order even new? Is it not what we've had since time immemorial? When you really look at it, the New World Order is nothing new at all. This is what's been in control of the world all of our recorded history that we have as far back as it goes we live in a world that has been ravaged by war non-stop since the beginning of time and it's only gotten worse uh, these statements you know go in by david rockefeller I've read them to you before. Some even believe that we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interest of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalist and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure, one world, if you will. If that's the change, I stand guilty. I am proud of it. George Herbert Walker Bush, the war in Iraq is a rare opportunity to move towards a historic period of cooperation. Out of these troubled times, a new world order can emerge. And, you know, these statements all go on down. They're very much in line with new world order thought. And again, it's nothing new. The only thing new about it might be improved cooperation between those at the top. And when we say those at the top, what are we really talking about well that's the question because who really is at the top of the pyramid that's really what we want to know and you know the evidence is there you just have to look and you just have to look a little bit deeper and you have to look a little bit farther back in time we know the demonic cabal controls the money they control the banks and the flow of money and the money is a system that's been given to us since the days of babylon it's a method of control. Have you ever heard of Ubuntu? It's um, a system devised by Michael Tillinger, uh, who is an author and also uh, expert on ancient Sumeria and, and Africa in general. And he basically tells us that we, we really could devise a system that wouldn't even be barter and trade it would eliminate the money it would eliminate the ability of the cabal to implement its new world order on us and really the key is getting out of the monetary system that is the key because that's how they control us they control us by the money we are indentured slaves to them because of their money system that they've given us and control us with so who was the greatest empire of all time? The Roman Empire, you could see it here at 117 AD at its greatest extent. The Mongol Empire, it was the largest as far as continuous uh, area under its control. Maybe it was the British Empire because the, the sun never set on the British Empire. As you could see, it was spread out across the world. Or perhaps it's the empire that's staring us in the face right here and right now. The one that is controlling us by the use of the United States military and NATO. Perhaps this is the greatest empire the world has ever known. The New Atlantis. These are locations where there are U.S. troops and U.S. bases. You can see it's everywhere all over the world except for in china and except for in russia itself and, and just a few a handful of countries however those areas are totally encircled did you realize that the united states has all these bases in africa look at those bases there must be a lot to control in africa that we are not aware of we do know that there's definitely gold and precious natural reserves down there 
and Africa has gold mines in South Africa that are 150,000 years old or older so who was doing those gold mines in South Africa over a hundred thousand years ago mining for gold these are the US bases near Russia and China and you can see completely encircled America has a collective defense arrangement with over 50 other nations and has to come to the aid and has stated they will come to the aid of any of these countries in fact, America has been at war 93% of the time, 222 years out of 239 years since its existence. Actually, we could say 224 out of 241 because this is two years old at this point. The U.S. has only been at peace for 21 years since its birth. So this is just amazing stuff. Pick any year since 1776, and there's only a 91% chance that America was involved in some war during that calendar year. No U.S. president truly qualifies as a peacetime president. Instead, all U.S. presidents can technically be considered war presidents. The U.S. has never gone a decade without war. The only time the U.S. went five years without war, 1935-1940, was during the isolationist period of the Great Depression. And this just gives you a, a little look at a graphic. 21 years without, 214 with. And here's a listing of every war which the U.S. was involved in. And of course, so much of it was against the Native Americans, the, the people that were here in the first place, who these Europeans came and just booted off their property or killed them intentionally and just conquered them. And we are taught to be proud of these things in the schools, you know, to be proud of people like Columbus, that di he discovered America. America had people on it for tens of thousands of years, perhaps hundreds of thousands of years. He didn't discover crap, except for new people to subject to conquering oppression. this mindset is the mindset of war of non-stop war that we are taught since we are kids we are taught competitiveness we are taught survival at all costs you know the brainwashings that we are subject to start as little little children and nowadays, you know, as soon as your kids are born, you know, they have to have certain immunizations, which who knows what they do to them or what they shoot them up with. Mandated by law. And you could be thrown in jail if you don't agree with these things. So, I mean, are we really free? It's pretty obvious. The answer is no. This is not a free society. We are still in a feudal situation. We are still all slaves to the system. And the control of the system starts with money. That's where it starts. That's how they control us. And money feeds the war machine. You can see these are military spendings as a percentage of taxes that come in. So the United States leads the way as far as tax dollars going to the military because the U.S. is the law enforcement of the New World Order that we had taken a look at before and this is this is brand new this is uh, 2017 this is President Trump's proposed 1.15 trillion discretionary budget 54 percent of it military 1% food and agriculture, 2% transportation, and our infrastructure is a joke compared to the rest of the world. And it's because we're spending all our money on the military. And you can see education, 6%, government, 6%, housing, 6%, Medicare, health, 5%, international affairs, 4 energy and the environment, only 4%. We can't have free energy if we were allowed to. Everything is there for it. 
on a trip I took recently, I was amazed at all the windmills everywhere and all the fracking operations everywhere. And uh, really, with, with solar and wind, we could have clean energy that would last us forever besides the hidden Tesla technologies that exist, which are there and are real. Biggest military budgets, as you can see, look at the U.S. and then look at China and then look at the rest of the world. And when you look at this, U.S. is the current police chief, however you want to put it, the current strong arm of the NWO, which, <coughs> which is going to change because it's going to be China in the future. And you can see how things are starting to change there. And, you know, one of the countries that we're taught to fear in the West, oh my God, they're going to get a nuclear weapon, is Iran. Look at how much they're spending in comparison. It's a joke. It's nothing but fear, and it's nothing but the fact that they're not under a Rothschild central bank. This is interesting. This is an actual Sumerian carving. When giants were upon the earth, the giants were the gods. Utu and Inanna holding earthlings captive. So this is what the Anunnaki thought of us. Slaves. Nothing but slaves. Nothing but possessions. Nothing but cattle. Nothing but vassals. We are here to work their land, to mine their gold, to provide them with food. Because there was always offerings given to the gods. The gods always got the first part. Remnants of that are still in tithing. Tithing, give 10% of your income to the church, to the synagogue. Give another 40% to the banks and the bankers. In, in effect, we are nothing but slaves in this Babylonian system because it is a Babylonian system, and this is where it all originates from. It originates with the Anunnaki and the Sumerian gods. And remember, Ur is where Abraham came out of, and Abraham is the father of the three monotheistic uh, religions, so supposedly monotheistic, even though... There's reference after reference after reference as to there being other gods. But these are the one, of the one of the methods of control. Inanna presents King Shushin to Nanarsin. So kingship was passed on from the gods to humans. And we were told which of their lineage was going to rule over us when they went behind the scenes. To the ancient Egyptians, religion was a large part of their lives. It was a very important part of them. It was largely based off of tradition handed down through their lives. For example, that of the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was considered a god to them. He was God on earth. God on earth. Just like the Pope is the representative of Christ on earth. Everything he said was absolute and lawful, no matter what it was. This is considered divine kingship, meaning that whoever the king is, he is the equivalent of a god. The Epic of Gilgamesh is very interesting. Prior to discovering the Sumerian ta tablets and prior to discovering the Nag Hammadi and some other ancient books that we had lost to us and we just didn't know about the stories that the bible gave us gave us interesting little things to think about but didn't paint a whole picture and when, now when we go into these tablets from sumeria of which there are hundreds of thousands of them hundreds of thousands tons it's a huge treasure trove of info so gilgamesh King of Uruk was two thirds God and one third man. I guess he would count as a Nephilim. He built magnificent ziggurats or temple towers surrounding his city with high walls and laid out orchards and fields. He was physically beautiful, immensely strong, and very wise. Although Gilgamesh was godlike in body and mind, he began his kingship as a cruel despot. He lorded over his subjects, raping any woman that struck his fancy, whether she was the wife of one of his warriors or the daughter of a nobleman. He accomplished his building projects with forced labor, and his exhausted subjects groaned under his oppression. 
The gods heard his subjects' pleas and decided to keep Gilgamesh in check by creating a wild man named Enkidu, who was as magnificent as Gilgamesh. Enkidu became Gilgamesh's great friend, and Gilgamesh's heart was shattered when Enkidu died of an illness inflicted by the gods. Gilgamesh then traveled to the edge of the world and learned about the days before the deluge and the other secrets of the gods, and he recorded them on stone tablets. This is out of the Bible. And here, this is out of Deuteronomy. And this just gives you the mindset that has been handed down from time immemorial. Unfortunately, so many people that believe in the Bible have not truly read it from cover to cover. Or read it from cover to cover and studied it. Studied it for years and understand exactly what's in it. This is Deuteronomy 10. When you go near a city or fight against it, then proclaim and offer a peace to it. And it shall be that if they accept your offer of peace and they open to you, then all the people who are found in it shall be placed under tribute to you and serve you. So in other words, you know, let give them a shot. And if they will be your slaves, great. Now, if the city will not make peace with you, but makes war against you, then you shall besiege it. And when the Lord your God delivers it to your hands, you shall strike every male in it with the edge of the sword. But the women, the little ones, the livestock, and all that is in the city, all of its spoil, you shall plunder for yourselves, and you shall eat the enemy's plunder, which the Lord your God gives you. Thus you shall do to all the cities which are very far from you, which are not the cities of these nations. But of these cities, these people which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance. And he's talking about the original Canaanites. And you shall let nothing that breathes remain alive, but you shall utterly destroy them. So they won't have any claim to the lands because they were the original people that were there. The Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanite and the Peruzzlite and the Hevite and the Jebusites, just as your Lord God has commanded you, lest they teach you to do according to all their abominations which they have done for their gods. Okay, so don't let them teach you anything that their gods have taught them to do. Interesting. That's what they're basically saying. Don't let them teach you any of the ways of their gods or things that their gods taught you. And you sin against the Lord your God. Clear reference to polytheism. Your God, their gods. And there are hundreds of references to this. These gods that are being talked about in here are not God with a big G. These are little G's. These are more like what are called devas, uh, demigods, you could call them extraterrestrials, you could call them interdimensionals in some cases. These are beings. Um, these are not the creator of the universe. These, these are not the ultimate source of everything. These might be beings that terraform planets that make planets habitable for certain life forms. But these are warlike beings of which there are many different ones and there's different factions just like there are different factions in the NWO and in the Cabal. They all have their own agendas going on and they are all self-serving and all out for themselves just like you know a clinton whether it's hillary or bill you know would prefer to be in charge as opposed to a bush george or papa george they still want the glory for themselves they still want what they want and you know rockefeller and rothschild might not agree on some things they don't always agree, and they probably do use their minions to, you know, sabotage each other. When you look back at uh, another verse in Deuteronomy, it says basically that 
at the council of the gods, the Lord apportioned the earth, each to a son of a god. You know, the sons of the gods. Each one of these beings got a different land to take over. It's just like when you conquer a huge area and you say, okay, I'm going to give this to that lord and this to this lord and this to this duke and this to this lady. This is how the royals do things, you know, those of Anunnaki blood. So this is how it's always been. So there are different factions controlling the different countries. And they give different countries different religions, little variations on them. But they are warlike. And this is Jericho and, and Joshua. On the seventh day... They rose early at the dawn of the day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And on the seventh time, when the priest had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city, and the city and all that is in it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the harlot and all those who are with her house shall live, because she hid the messengers that we sent and let us in the back door. But you, keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, lest when you have devoted them, you take any of the devoted things and make a camp of Israel a thing for destruction and bring trouble upon it. But all the silver and the gold and the vessels of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord. So the silver and the gold and the vessels of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. Give to God that which is his. The gods want the natural resources of the planet. So the people shouted, trumpets were blown, and as soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people raised a great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before them, and they took the city. Then they utterly destroyed all in the city, both the men and the women, the young and the old, oxen sheep and asses with the edge of the sword so they killed every man woman and child in that city every man woman and child every little baby ripped from mom's arms and killed butchered we need to wake up and realize what we're giving energy to when we pray when we communicate to God, quote unquote, realize what it is you're sending your energy and your prayers to. How do you justify this? Most people, I think, if you would say, you know, what is God? So many people would say, God is love. Where is the love in these acts? For in the cities of these people that the Lord your God give as you for an inheritance, you shall save nothing alive, nothing that breathes. And Canaan was originally inhabited by various tribes of Canaanites. And again, it, it brings us back to where we are today with the Palestinians that have been brutally slaughtered after being kicked out of their homeland that they held for 1900 years. It wasn't their fault that the Romans conquered Israel and sent the Israelites into another period of diaspora. It wasn't the Canaanites' fault. It wasn't the Palestinians' fault. 1,900 years is a long time. The United States itself hasn't been around, but you know, not even 300 years. 1,900 years. These people were there, and they were kicked out. And there's definitely things that have been misrepresented. So this is John 844. Ye are of your father and the devil. This is Jesus talking. And the lust of your father, it is your will to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and standeth not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father thereof. 
Jesus at the temple. The crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple courts and drove out all those that were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those that were selling doves. They're selling peace, right? Doves are peace. And he declared to them, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. And that is what the entire world is now under the control of the cabal. He was an Essene. And the Essenes owned no personal property other than whatever clothes they had. They were communal. They did not value items and objects. They worked together to support each other. So who rules this planet? Well, obviously it's a god of war. It's obviously a god of war, a warlike god or gods and beings. These gods have taught us all their secrets of war, and we work so much of our lives in order to pay for their wars. We are living in their Babylonian money system that keeps us slaves to wars. The first Christian emperor of Rome, Constantine, had a vision, and it was basically conquer under this sign, or, and it was the sign of the cross. And as we know, you know, from the Sumerian writings, the cross is a symbol of the Anunnaki, the planet of the crossing. And did Jesus ever talk about conquering nations? Not that I could remember. Actually, he contradicted a lot of what's in the Old Testament. You have heard an eye for an eye, a tooth for the tooth. Well, I tell you, turn the other cheek. He, he directly contradicted what was in the Old Testament time and time again. And Constantine brought together and created the Catholic Church out of his councils where they took hundreds of books that were in circulation, hundreds and hundreds of writings that were regarded as valid and just chose 66 for their purpose of control. 66. Interesting number, isn't it? Well, there's 66 books in the Bible. Think about that. Six is a number of imperfection. And seven is a number of perfection and divinity. And six is a number of imperfection, of human frailty and weakness, of greed. They that control the minds and the hearts control everything. The Nag Hammadi. I owned this book and read through it many times. And it's, it's the Gnostic scriptures, and the stories in there are very, very... Some of them are very similar to what's in the Bible, but they're fuller, and they have more... Like, you'll get basically one little line in the Bible, and then you'll get a whole paragraph in the Nag Hammadi text that put it into a truer context. And uh, it's a very, very different picture that comes out. It's one of working on yourself, not blind belief and faith in the blood of somebody that was slain as a sacrifice to the gods. More of work on yourself, work on the the piece of you, the divinity that is within. Raise yourself upwards. Work on yourself as a being. Live up to what Christ represented. Not just simply you could be horrible, evil, and be... Hitler, but then on your deathbed say, oh, I believe in Jesus, and you're going to heaven, and you're saved. A very, very different picture is painted in the Nag Hammadi texts. Completely different. It actually goes along with many other Eastern philo philosophies on self-realization, on the nature of reality as, as maya or illusion, 
as the fact that the world is controlled by these negative archonic influences. Very, very uh, interesting. I'd definitely recommend people to start looking at the Nag Hammadi texts and read everything you possibly could on the ancient Sumerian texts because the whole story is then there too. And these stories paint a very different picture of where we are and ev everything makes sense, complete sense. So in closing, is the New World Order new? Hell no. This is the same shit we've had since time immemorial. This is just one more of their cycles of control. So we need to wake people up for this. If you found this informative, please give it a thumbs up. And please be open-minded enough to accept the fact that the things that you were taught since childhood are not necessarily the truth. We've all been conditioned. Totally, totally conditioned and brainwashed into order in order to control us and to put us in a society where we could be functioning citizens of the elite functioning slaves of the elite dedicated to gods of war that want to have a perpetual state of disharmony disunity in pitting human against human because if humans actually banded together, as it states, going back to the Tower of Babel, and had one mind and one purpose, who knows what they could do? They could be like the gods themselves. So, the gods don't want that, and that's why they came down and scattered us everywhere. And that's why they're keeping us separate now. And that's why they use their new world order and their bloody money cabal to control us. The first step to getting out of this is to stop feeding the system. We have to create a new system that we could step into out of the old system. And we're going to have to do it on a small level locally. Supporting your local businesses, your local farmers, getting involved in cooperatives, perhaps bartering, supporting each other on a local level. And we have to get out of this system and stop letting all of our tax money, which taxes itself is a completely another subject and something that needs to basically end. We have to find a new system and eliminate this old system because this old system keeps us in slavery. So again, please, if you found it interesting, give it a thumbs up. Share with others, as many people as possible. We have to get this word out. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe for more updates. Thank you so much for being part of the Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you so much for helping to bring some light into the world, some true light and true knowledge and awareness, and start to dispel the darkness that has enveloped us for at least five, 6,000 years. Thank you very much. Take care.